All right, y'all, everybody is talking about how expensive eggs are. So I wanted to give you an idea for a recipe that will use something in place of eggs and make the most delicious muffins you've had. Look at this terrible looking banana. This thing is so, so ripe that it almost fell apart in my hands. Like you can smell the banana smell coming from it. It, it seems like it's almost turning into banana liqueur inside of the banana peel. So I'm using this and I'm going to be using some more bananas until I get the amount of banana that I want to create a super easy, moist, delicious muffin recipe with no eggs. And you can, it, this is so versatile. You can use this for a lot of different add-ins to make the kinds of muffins that you want. You can think about adding in blueberries, diced peaches, apple, you know, nuts, uh, cranberries or raisins, all kinds of things. So stick with me and we'll get right to it. So as you saw, I already put one super ripe banana in there, but I'm going to want to add more bananas to this because this is just going to make the, the most moist muffins that you'll ever have. Bananas are actually a great substitute for eggs anyway because they they give they give that moisture to your baked product and obviously this is for sweet things. So there I've got two bananas. I just want to add more. It's not like there's a set amount of bananas that you have to add. I'm just adding bananas until it seems like the amount of bananas in there is right to me. So I'm going to add another banana now. And of course, if you all follow me or watch my videos, then you know that I'm composting these banana peels. These don't get thrown away. These going, go into a little sack that later get dumped out into my garden with things like all kinds of kitchens, kitchen scraps, um, vegetable scraps, eggshells, different things like that. But this recipe doesn't have eggs. I will use a stick of butter. You can, um, you probably want to go ahead and soften this. In fact, I'm feeling of this stick of butter now, and it seems like it might be still a little bit, little bit firm. Uh, it's been out of the refrigerator for a while, but I'm going to pop it in the microwave just for a few seconds to get it so that it's a little softer, so it'll be easier to mix in. And while that's in there, I'm going to get out my self-rising flour. Yes, I'm using self-rising flour for this, y'all. This is just so simple. I mean, you're not having to mix in baking powder or baking soda or anything. We're just going to use self-rising flour. You also don't have to mix in salt because self-rising flour already has salt. So now that stick of butter is ready, and I'm going to put it in here, and then I'm going to get my mixer and get it all mixed up. Um, I'm going to see first with a fork just if it's, if it's soft enough just to mix it with a fork. I doubt that it will be, but we'll give it a try. Nope, no, it's definitely going to need, it's going to need the mixer. That's okay. That's okay. That's fine. Before I even get the mixer, I'm just going to go ahead and add in a little bit of vanilla. This is my homemade vanilla. I will link in the description below the instructions on how I make that. And I'm just going to use the cap here so that I'll be able to tell you it's about a teaspoon. You don't have to add the vanilla. I like to add the vanilla to muffins. So, all right, let me get the mixer now. All righty. So I'm just going to whip together the butter and the bananas and the vanilla until it seems like that's all really well incorporated. And um, if you don't if you don't want to use butter or if you don't have butter, you can use like a half a cup of oil. You know, I, I like to use butter. You could also probably use a half a cup of coconut oil, um, whatever you prefer. But for the for the flavor that I love, use butter because that's what that's what I'm using in this recipe. Okay, yep. And so the thing that I was really going for in making this recipe was keeping it simple, using as few ingredients as possible. So I'm getting about two cups of self-rising flour. Y'all know I use daily bread self-rising flour. That's my absolute favorite. So that's what I have here. Um, any self-rising flour will work. If you don't have self-rising flour, you can make self-rising flour by adding baking powder and salt to regular flour. I'll put it instructions in the description how to do that. That's also a half a cup of milk that I've just added. So ingredients so far, I've got in here three bananas, one of them super duper ripe at least, a stick of butter, a cap of vanilla or a teaspoon of vanilla, two cups of self-rising flour, a half a cup of milk, and now I'm going to get brown sugar. You can use brown sugar, you can use white sugar, you can use a combination, however you want to do it. 
but I'm putting about one cup of brown sugar in here. If you don't have brown sugar and you want to use brown sugar, just use white sugar and add about anywhere between like a teaspoon and a tablespoon of molasses, whatever you prefer, how much, how much of that brown sugar or molasses flavor that you like. So, and now this, this is a quarter cup measuring cup and it wasn't quite full. So that's why I'm saying it's, it's about a cup of brown sugar. And I'm just going to get this mixed in. And then once I've gotten all this mixed in and everything's well incorporated, um, I'm going to add in just for the extra seasoning, a little bit of nutmeg and cinnamon just I'm just going to sprinkle it just like just a tiny bit just to give it a little bit of um, that that aroma and that flavor which is so good you can leave those out they're optional I just chose to put them in what I want you to get is the concept of this using the self-rising flour the butter the milk and the bananas and don't worry about eggs because eggs are super expensive and you can use this as a base for making amazing muffins with all kinds of different add-ins. All right, so I'm gonna go get the nutmeg and, and give it a few shakes in there real quick. Y'all, how frequently do you not buy nutmeg? I don't buy nutmeg super often. I've had this little thing of nutmeg forever. I, I probably need to buy some more because I'm getting low, but that, that thing of nutmeg is old as the hills. It still works, it still smells good. Cinnamon, I'm gonna just give a little bit of cinnamon just to shake. Again, this is really to taste, you know, just whatever kinds of things you might like in there. You might decide you want to put some pumpkin pie spice in here. You know, there's so many different things you can do. Um, but if you realize that you can, you know, use these base ingredients to make muffins, you're, you know, you're going to win no matter what you put in it as far as muffin add-ins. So I'm just finishing mixing this up. It's kind of a thick batter. It's not going to be runny like cake batter. Um, it's not going to be so quite so thick as like brownie batter. I decided in my case, I wanted to just add in some unsweetened flaked coconut. Um, you can use the sweetened coconut if you want. So this is how I'm ending up with a, a banana coconut muffin. But again, if you don't want that tropical flavor, don't put the coconut in there. Instead, put in some blueberries or just leave it just plain banana or like I mentioned diced apple diced peaches you know you pine pineapple you could put some pineapple in that would be delicious the possibilities are really endless and you'll have delicious moist muffins and I'm just going to get this mixed up and once it's all mixed up I'm going to put the batter in a muffin tin uh, grease muffin tin and bake it. I've got my oven right now preheated to 350, but I actually ended up upping it to 375. Um, and so I baked, ended up baking them at 375 until they were done. So what you're going to want to do is um, you're just going to bake them until you can put a toothpick in them and it comes out clean. That, that's, that's how long you bake them. And I'm not going to tell you how long to bake them because depending on the add-ins that you put in your muffins, it might take longer or it might take shorter you know, then, then how long it takes for me. So don't worry about how long I bake them. And if you want to bake them at 350, bake them at 350. If you want to bake them at 375, you can, you could bake them even up to 425 if you want, but definitely keep an eye on them. And so you see that consistency It's just, it's a thick, it's a thick batter. It's, it's, it's not quite as thick as like fudge brownie batter, which, you know, you almost have to spread out into the pan. Um, but it's definitely thicker than a cake batter. And, uh, so I'm just going to get this into this greased muffin tin and get them in the oven and bake them until a toothpick comes out clean. And I will speed through this part and then bring you back when they're done. I took them out of the oven and I let them cool until I was able to get them out of the pan and onto a plate. Then I gave one to my mom and she loved them. So she came downstairs and decided to get another one. And I was like, mom, how about if you just do it on camera, like crack one open so I can show everyone how tender these are. 
So she was like, oh, should I pick a certain one? I was like, whichever one you want. So anyway, here's the one she got. And um, and then she's just bringing it in close. And look at that, y'all. Look at how tender this is. These things are so moist and so tender on the inside. I just can't even begin to tell you how good these are. So I hope you will try making these. Put in whatever add-ins you want and let me know what you think in the comments below. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.